hello sir uh, uh surendra shall we start yeah. a presentation yeah. sir we can start we can start okay i welcome back all the participants for the day 3 session 2 of our sttp program uh, which was carried by our dr surendra singh sir uh, singh sir thank you priya uh, i hope my screen is visible to you yeah it's visible sir okay so uh, welcome back everyone so in the uh, last session we discuss about how to blend the aggregates together for uh, formations of cement concrete mixes that can be used for concrete payments right but now we should be knowing that now the aggregates are not available okay you can go anywhere you can see luckily in chennai we have some curing plants which are functioning okay but if you go to the north part of the country there you can see it's very difficult now especially when you are at the hilly areas and then if you want to get the uh, you know aggregates uh, it's very difficult the transportation cost is being increasing because there there will be only few curing plant that will be functioning okay why this is happening and as far as the fine aggregates are concerned we don't have this is a complete ban on curing earlier we were getting natural sand now we are not getting the natural sand okay we have shifted to stone dust you know uh, you will be you know it, it's interesting to know that earlier we were dumping the crushed sand now we are not finding the crushed sand also what to do so that's why we have to uh, look for the materials innovative kind of the materials that can be used okay so in this uh, discussion we'll be discussing what are the various innovative materials that we can use for concrete payments okay so i'll start with this presentation but what is the need of concrete payment first of all right everything is apart why we need the concrete payment you will be thinking okay earlier 10 years back we had 98% of flexible payment in india now uh, the the current ministry is uh, you know uh, is giving more attention on concrete payment because of many many reasons okay last year we know our chennai is also a green you know uh, green uh, city but kerala is more green okay so uh, i was fortunate enough to be uh, you know invited for giving a guest lecture in one of the colleges in kerala and i was very very excited because kerala is always you know green city green state so in fact it was so green that the roads were also green what i found so i was residing in a guest house and near the guest house this was the road which was used by only one chokidar okay not by you uh, used by any vehicles also not even by the cycles that's why it is intacted what i found that the road is also green i took some snapshot and when you zoom it you can see that the plants and plants are coming out of the pavement how it is possible this might be case because where there is a water water and bitumen are enemy to each other okay and we know kerala we have get, we, we gets enough amount of the monsoon and because of that the plants might have the seeds might have you know uh, came in the pavement and then you know because of the erosion bitumen will be going there you can uh, when you take some samples from here you can see the aggregates are coming out with your hand only what would have happened if this payment would have been the national highway or the express way so because of these reasons after every monsoon we have to lay our uh, you know one we have to provide one over the over the existing flexible payment okay so this shows that the areas where we are having the good monsoon flexible payment might not be a good solution okay so you can see in india we have many many potholes okay this is a pothole this is one of the potholes why it is happening because of the water because of the traffic okay you can see here that earlier this person was fishing and then he found that okay now i am done i can go to another pond that is another pothole so this is happening because of the water potholes because of the poor construction there are many many things and this kind of a distress we call as a alligator cracking because it looks like the alligator why it is happening because of the heavy vehicles so in india we have the farmers you know about the old farmers are sitting now you know surrounding in delhi so during the peak season of the harvesting many unexpected trucks will be coming or let's say let's say, let's take the example of delhi now the farmers have blocked one of the ways so all the trucks will be falling other roads and while you were constructing while you were designing that payment you didn't account those traffic there now there is a increase in the traffic so 
flexible payment cannot handle unexpected load repetition that is why the cracks are inevitable the third distress you can see here it's a corrugation it is happening because of the poor strength of the subgrade and the fourth one is rutting okay when in, all the vehicles are going there in in, in a one section it will be there will be rutting so all these cases makes flexible payment less stable less durable okay and after every monsoon season you have to provide one overlay so that's that's why maintenance cost will be significantly higher right on the other hand if i talk about the concrete payments what we can get concrete payment they are stable when there is a rainfall you are get, getting sorry i have to drink water so in concrete payments it's more stable it's more durable if there are unaccounted traffic also it can sustain okay and the design life of the concrete payment is minimum 30 years whereas the flexible payment is in years with two maintenance so because of the lesser maintenance or we can say no maintenance concrete payment becomes economical than the flexible payment and this is the thing because of that now you can see concrete payment it start boosting up right and during construction obviously it's environmentally friendly but now you will be thinking if concrete payment is cheaper it's better everything is there then why in india we don't have the concrete payments right it was the case 10 years before now the things are changing but yeah there will be some disadvantages if the advantages are there the biggest disadvantage is the high initial construction cost india being a developing nation we don't have that much of funds okay now we are getting that much of funding okay and the other thing is traffic delay you have to wait for 14 to 28 hours 28 days sorry and for the flexible payment i'm sleeping at my home next day what i can see there is a new payment flexible payment and i can use it but the concrete payment you have to wait at least for 28 days or 14 days but nowadays technology is being changing we are coming up with different kind of the cements that can give you the one day strength good strength or precast technology is coming roller compacted concrete technology is coming where which can be used immediately after construction okay so it will be changing but more research more field application is required right so uh, today's presentation is innovative materials or we can say sustainable materials okay so before that you should know what are the various materials that we are using we have soil we have coarse aggregate fine aggregate that we use for uh, cement concrete payments definitely we, we, we need the cement right and nowadays we are using admixtures so admixtures can be two types chemical admixtures and mineral admixtures so let's say you are sitting in the jain college right and you have to come to iit madras you know it will be taking let's say 3 hours because of the traffic and you know your concrete can be you know set in only one hour or 90 minutes what will you do now luckily we have the air mixtures we can use retarders if you want to you know uh, want that your concrete should be set immediately you can use acylators similarly nowadays we are using fly ash we are using silica fume everything we are using for replacing the cement because we got to know that earlier we were using opc nowadays we are using ppc ppc slag based or fly ash based because it it not only reduces the cost but it improve the durability and the mechanical properties of the concrete so nowadays this is the recent advancement that we are using fly ash around 30% in all the construction and it is very very good it will be giving you more properties it will be giving you good strength good durability property at a lower cost so you must be hearing this word sustainability sustainability okay so what do you mean by sustainability so the book definition is that sustainable means anything okay conserving the known renewable resources for future generation why to save for the future generation if i am living in the present why can't i use it so my definition of sustainability is different it's 3 hours okay it's 3 hour reduce recycle okay so we have uh, one uh, reconsider reduce recycle and reuse okay reduce recycle and reuse why my definition there not even the present generation the future generation should also be recycling the things right because we don't have there is a uh, ban on the curing activities so sustainability now means according to my definition as far as the aggregates are concerned we should not be using natural aggregates we should always be using recycled aggregate up to the maximum possible extent so what are the various materials okay 
so there could be very various material fly ash is there okay many many waste materials are there but in today's presentation i'll be keeping myself constrained to only the recycle aggregate or we can say manufactured aggregate so what are the various recycle aggregates okay i know the first thing that will be coping in your mind is waste building material cnd waste we say okay so we can say there is a one component of the cnd waste that is recycled concrete aggregate that is coming from the buildings or the existing pavement the other thing being as a transportation engineer we have wrap material reclaimed asphalt pavement i'll be using this terminology wrap r a p wrap which is the waste material that we are getting from the flexible pavement usually it is dumped along the road side then nowadays we are having copper industry we are having slag industry we have the iron industry we have this fly ash okay so those waste materials also we can use it up to a certain proportion okay then recent advancement is plastic i have seen everywhere now they are talking about the plastic waste or the rubber waste can we use it yes for flexible payment you can use it for concrete payment i don't know without doing any research how we can say okay so today's presentation i'll be confining myself to these two aggregates because they are well studied and nowadays the government is also allowing you to use recycled concrete aggregates for payments and wrap aggregates for flexible payment but my area is concrete payment so i'll be discussing the use of recycled concrete aggregate and reclaimed asphalt payment for concrete payments now the question you will be thinking see whenever you are going to your schools colleges offices you will be seeing lot of waste materials are there then this question will be coming can i use this waste material can i use this waste material or not okay so uh, how to use what proportion should i use should i completely replace the aggregates or should i use only partial re, uh, recycle aggregates okay if i have to construct my own home can i use the recycle aggregates that questions will be coming right so definitely as a researcher as an engineer you can use it but there is a set guidelines okay so like uh, we have we have to first chemically and mechanically see whether the aggregate is good or not then only we have to see whether we can use it for the concrete or not okay so mechanical characterization in the you know previous session also we discuss about different properties specific gravity water absorption toughness strength okay hardness smoothness flaky particle elongated particle and durability why we need these properties because if you see like you are using uh, you know in granular subbase you know you will be compacted it will be compacted by your vibratory rollers okay so if the vibratory rollers are standing over your aggregate and it will be crushing the aggregate and if the aggregate is already crushed how it will be giving you the properties you are blending the aggregates together you are thinking this is 20 mm this is 10 mm you are blending but when you are compacting it the 20 mm will be fragmented into smaller portions so your blending will be changing if the blending is changing you know your properties will be different so similarly when you are applying the brakes now it's monsoon okay when you are applying the brakes there will be slipping or skidding if i use some recycle aggregate then what will happen okay if it is not having good resistance to abrasion it will be removed and then your entire pavement will be collapsed so that's why we have to first mechanically and chemically characterize the aggregate whether it is of such importance that we can use it we have to decide it okay if mechanically the aggregate is good then think for use for the concrete pavements okay in concrete pavements we have the different properties okay so let's say we take an example i got one recycle aggregate here now you see in iit madras our main gate is being upgraded okay so we have a lot of waste material coming from there so how much of the natural aggregate i can replace it with that recycle aggregate so what i'll be doing i'll be replacing 25% aggregate okay and see the concrete i'll replace 50% of the aggregate and see the concrete i can use 70% and see the concrete i can recycle 100% and see whether my concrete is giving me good properties or not okay so let's say if 70% is giving me all the properties as specified by indian road congress then definitely you can go and recycle 70% if you are not getting if you sometimes it will be there you are getting one property at 70% but the other property you are not getting it in that case you have to reduce the consumption of recycled aggregate because we cannot take the risk okay so what are the various property obviously fresh properties workability that we discuss concrete should be workable if let's say you are using some recycled aggregate and it is absorbing the water okay it is absorbing the cement let's say cementitious water what will happen you will not get 
the good workability. If you are not getting the good workability, you cannot compact it. Okay, you have to provide more energy. But thankfully, now we have the admixture that we had discussed in the previous slide. We have water, uh, water reducing admixtures. Okay, we have the accelerators, retarders that we can use it. Okay, so now this is not a concern. Okay, but what about the properties? The different properties. If I want to use some recycled aggregate for my payment, if I want to use my recycled aggregate for buildings, they could be different properties. Then you have to check that whether at a replacement ratio, let's say 50%, you are getting all the properties or not. But for the concrete payments, the important thing is flexural strength. Okay, and you might be having this, uh, you know, testing equipment in your lab. Okay, it's known as third point flexural strength. But I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, don't use this method if you are going to use for payments, use four point bending apparatus in order to calculate the flexural strength. For buildings, three point is okay. But for the payments, if you, went, if you want to know the flexural strength, then do a four point bending. Because you draw one shear force bending moment diagram. What will be seeing? The bending moment will be like that. And if you see the shear force, it will be like that. Okay, so what you can see here that at this position, we know the payment will be failing in pure bending, but here the shear forces are also coming. That means you cannot use it. If I draw the shear force diagram for here, how it will be like, like, and if I want to draw the bending moment, let's say it is like that. That means in this area, there is pure bending. And if the crack is coming here, that means it will be simulating the field condition. So that's why if you want to find the flexure strength, always go with the four point flexure strength. Okay, so let's say you are going with 25%, 50%, 75% and 100% of recycling. Okay, I have to decide as a boss, as a contractor, as an engineer, I have to decide how much the material we can re recycle. So what I did, I am studying everything, 25%, 50, 7500. Let's say 50% is giving you the flexation. What is the flexation requirement in uh, payments? 4.5 MPA at the field condition. At laboratory, you should be having more. That we'll be discussing tomorrow in the first session. Why 5.6 is required and why 4.5 is required at the field. Okay. So let's say at 50% replacement ratio, you are getting a strength of 5 MPA. Now you'll be saying, yes, IRC says 4.5. I got 5 MPA. That means I can replace 50% of aggregate with the any recycle aggregate that you are studying. But no, you should not be in a hurry. You should not take the decisions because if sometimes, most of the times, if you are getting the mechanical properties, there will be a durability issue. Okay, there could be many, many durability issues, especially in Tamil Nadu, where we are surrounded by the seawater. Okay, because let's say this is your concrete. You made your concrete okay these are the porosity there are some holes voids so what will happen sea water will be coming okay it will be reacting because see here there are pores when you use some recycle aggregate let's say 50 percent of recycle aggregate you are using and it led to porous payment so what will happen the sea water will be coming and reacting with your cementitious product and then this void will be becoming more Okay, and again, your voids will be breaking your entire structure will be failing, right? So we have to see the durability characteristics of your mixture. So what are the durability properties? Based upon the location, there can be different, different durability properties. Okay, so we'll be taking one by one. Let's say porosity. This is one of the fundamental property. So if you don't have the equipment also, then also you can study it. What you have to do? You use, you make one concrete cubes, dry it for 48 hours in the oven at around 100 degrees celsius if it is not affecting your recycled material then keep it in the water so it will absorb the water right so it will become heavy and then measure the weight uh, dry weight and the wet weight it will be giving you how much of amount of the water has been absorbed that will indirectly will be telling the porosity higher the porosity lesser durable will be your mix similarly we are constricting our payment sometimes on the subgrade. So in subgrade, you know, there will be water table, right? There will be water table. If the water table is high, sadly, it is not the condition of Chennai. But now with the recent rainfall, the water table might have come to the good level, right? So what can happen that the water can enter into the payment from the below side also. 
so how to calculate it what you have to do you have to make concrete okay and then paint on the all the sides right seal it and then keep it this open in the water and see how much of the water it is absorbing from the beneath then you can get now this pervious concrete concept is coming okay pervious concrete so let's say if you are using some recycle aggregate you need pervious concrete water should be directly flowing but if you are using some recycle aggregate which is blocking your chain then what will happen it will not be good right and similarly these are the photos you can see uh, okay chennai the sea water you are making some flyovers bridges so what can happen if you are using some recycle aggregate the, the sea water will be coming corroding your pavement corroding your pillars and then entire structure will be failing so before deciding the suitability of any waste material it should not only be basis of the on the basis of the uh, you know mechanical property it should also on the basis of the durability property there are other durability properties also such as corrosion sea water you know nacl cl will be coming and then reacting with your coral the boss and corroding it for payments we have shrinkage losses plastic shrinkage drying shrinkage cracks will be coming okay these cracks are coming because the water will be evaporated or your aggregate will be absorbing the water from a mixture let's say you have added 400 kg of water and your aggregate is absorbing the water so what will happen your cement paste will be will not be having enough amount of the water so cracks will be coming similarly you might have seen that in the concrete payments we are providing grooves so let's say this is my concrete payment after constructing we are providing some grooves for providing friction and let's say you are using some fine aggregate recycle aggregate after some time the tires will be coming and remember the tires will be coming with some sand so it it will be abrading the surface and once the abraded is surface slipping skidding all this risk will, will be associated so you should also calculate the abrasion resistance and this is not a scenario in at least in chennai this is known as freeze on top the water during the day time will be coming in the voids in the night time it will be converting into ice and you know the volume of the ice is more than volume of water so it will be exiting it needs some space right when the volume is extending so it will create some stresses and because of that your pavement will be failing okay so this is generally used where the sub Uh, surface temperature goes down below zero degrees centigrade. Okay, so now you know the method. What is the methodology? Whenever you see some recycle aggregate, first mechanically and chemically characterize it, and then use some concrete. See how it is affecting your fresh property. See how it is affecting your uh, mechanical properties, and most importantly, how it is affecting your durability performance. Okay, we can take one case study. Okay. so because you are all from you know nearby areas it will be you know it will be beneficial for you so cnd waste first thing is what do you mean by the cnd waste okay in india we are having more than 716 million tons of cnd waste generated every year it's a huge amount and remember this is the documented one illegal dumping is there in india okay how much it can be significantly higher we had one phd scholar okay he will be graduating this year so he went in chennai only and he found that in chennai this quantity is very very significant because there is a illegal dumping okay so we should come out with some rules and regulations uh, which will be stopping it illegal dumping so this figure can be significantly higher and out of all the cnd waste you can see cnd waste you can have bricks you will be having soil you will be having different thing concrete 23% around it is this is for chennai region 23% is your ca construction and demolition will out of that it is your recycled concrete aggregate that is the concrete aggregate that is coming from the buildings so what it will be having it will be having aggregate coarse aggregate it will be having cement mortar paste okay so because i don't have the aggregates can't i get the aggregates out of it you will be thinking right can i get the aggregates out of it and use it for construction of a new buildings then we have to see so normally in india or uh, you know uh, anywhere in india what is happening once the building is being demolished we are removing the steels first thing we are removing the plastics we are removing the other waste and then it will be coming to the crusher plant okay and the crusher plant with the help of we we discuss in the morning session we have different crushing techniques so they will be crushing into different fractions coarse aggregate and fine aggregate coarse aggregate can be of different size 40 60 20 40 okay whatever size if you zoom it you can see here 
these are the sizes that we'll be getting let's say these are 60 mm aggregate so it is 20 mm aggregate but because it is containing the cement mortar paste also along it, it will increase its size so we have to further crush it okay so based upon the number of crushing cycles you can get whatever the sizes you are getting but after this also a significant amount is going for the disposal okay so let's say in india let's say we are getting 7 16 million tons of cnd waste per year and we are using this technique how much of the aggregates we can recycle we can recycle only 60 percent of the aggregate rest 40 percent will again be going to the disposal sites why this is happening because the technique is conventional we have to upgrade this technology and luckily in chennai we will be having two crushing plants uh, okay it has already been approved in the you know in the next couple of months you'll be seeing that in chennai also we'll be starting doing the uh, recycling so what is difference see this is natural aggregate okay the stones you will be calling you can see surface is very very clean okay it's an angular aggregate look wise also it's very good but if i talk about the recycled concrete aggregate that we are getting from the buildings or the payments you can see it will also be having aggregates but it will be coated with old mortar and remember this old mortar is the culprit why it is culprit because as an engineer you should know the water absorption of the aggregate should be less than two percent then only you can use it if it is more than it then it's an issue what issue durability related issues can be there in case of the recycled concrete aggregate the water absorption value could be five times higher that is around 10 percent also that means we cannot use it right we'll see what about the rest of the properties you can see specific gravity of the aggregate that you are using for payment or building should be between 2.4 to 2.9 but for the recycle aggregate it is very very less in fact in some of the cases what i have seen it is less than two also especially the final fraction the water absorption should be less than two percent in recycle aggregate it could be 12 percent also about the other values abrasion value impact value crushing value it will be having a higher values which is not considered to be good okay so we 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 took one assignment what we did a nearby building was being demolished we went to the site we removed all the waste material out of it and then we brought the uh, recycled concrete aggregate you can see they are big size and then we used crusher single crusher and ten, uh, you know uh, the double crusher and we reduced the sizes into 20 mm 10 mm and 5 aggregate okay then you can see that the water absorption was way higher near about 10 percent and the code says that it should be less than two percent why because the aggregates were surrounded by your recycle this motor paste and this motor paste being porous it will absorb the water and bringing the water absorption more than two percent okay so what is happening in other countries other countries are also saying that if you want to use some recycle aggregate the water absorption should be less than two percent in Japan, China says 3%, Australia says 6%, in, but in our condition, what they found, it is around 10%. Okay, so earlier it was there. Now, uh, you know, <coughs> Indian standard specification 380 that we are using for uh, aggregates, now it is allowing you to use the recycled aggregate. In fact, it is allowing you to use to 100%. Now, if you want to construct your home, if you are, want to construct any uh, structure member, having the strength less than 15 MPA at 28 days, you can go for 100% replacement, 100% recycle you can do it. If you want to do in slabs or other things where the strength requirement is less than 25 MPA, you can go for 20 or 25%. Also. Earlier we were hesitant to use the recycle aggregate, but now the guideline is allowing you to do it. And yesterday only the uh, more specifications, more, okay, the, so ministry asked us now, we have to follow IS 383 and we can use the recycled aggregates. But what for the payments? Payment, they are saying you can use the recycled aggregate up to 30% only. For buildings, they say up to 100% when the strength is 15 MPA. In payment, we have base course. The strength requirement is 10 MPA. Then also it is saying 30%. Whereas in the buildings, there is a huge risk factor of uh, you know human beings. They say you can go for 100%. Why there is a dispensary? Because in the morning session only we discussed that building material is different from payment material the behavior is different okay so that means a lot of a lot of studies should be done but who is the culprit here the culprit here is this added motor 
okay this adhered motor is the culprit because of which we are not able to fully utilize the recycled aggregates what is happening in the morning session there was a question okay so uh, you know why 20 mm and 10 mm aggregates are used okay because see generally what happens this is your aggregate and this is your cement motor paste okay when we are binding it together there will be one joint we call this joint as interfacial transition zone okay because it's a transition zone transition from aggregate to cement motor so obviously this joint will be weak right in natural aggregates there will be only one interfacial transition zone but in recycled concrete aggregate there can be more than one interfacial transition zone. you can see this is your aggregate from the pre waste building it will be having motor and then you are keep putting it in a new concrete to make a concrete payment so what will be having you will be using new cement already old cement paste was there so how many joints you can see here one between new motor and the old motor one between the old aggregate and the old motor and one maybe between old aggregate and the new motor so you can have three itg interfacial transition zone that means the strength will be lesser as compared to natural aggregate this is the reason why the strength will be lesser because the cracks can go anywhere let's say i have this concrete i'm using one recycle aggregate which is having old motor okay so i'm thinking okay if i you increase the cement content can my properties could be achieved why may or may not be because your aggregate if you do the uch test of your aggregate it will be around 100 mpa if i'm making a concrete payment let's say 40 mpa i required okay but the bonding between the old motor and old aggregate was not good so whatever you do you increase the cement content then also crack will be going through old motor only okay so it's not beneficial to increase the cement content Okay, there can be many many failures so normally you can see here in recycled concrete aggregate the crack will always be going through old motor or joint between old motor and old aggregate okay and you are increasing the cement you want that if you are increasing the cement the crack should go from new cement because i can handle this new cement right i can handle the mixed design but it is not happening that is the reason we are not able to fully utilize recycled concrete aggregate but no problem we came with one solution what solution we know the chemistry of concrete okay when you are heating your concrete at a temperature of around 500 degrees celsius okay so what will happen the cement paste will be weakened okay it will be weakened and when it's weakened you have to just remove it how we can remove it we can put in a miller put some steel balls allow it to rotate it's like a low sensitive abrasion machine you put your aggregates after heating put some aggregate uh, some steel balls and allow it to rotate then you can see that you can get clear aggregates out of it so what we did we got the aggregate and we are following the same process okay the process that has been established in iit madra mechanical characterization then only we'll see how it is be affecting your concrete so earlier the water absorption was around four to five percent now after treating the recycled aggregate by our established technology we could reduce the water absorption to less than 2%. And if you can see, earlier the specific gravity was 2.2. Now the specific gravity is 2.8. That means we could able to remove this added motor and we could enhance the properties. Now the properties are good enough. Then we thought we'll be seeing how it will be affecting my concrete properties. So what concrete property was slump. So we replaced aggregates in proportions of 20%, 60%, and 100 We also did for 80%. So what we found that the slump value was near about the same for all the proportions. If I talk about the compressive strength, what is the compressive strength required for concrete payment? 40 MPa. And we can see a replacement of 100% yield around 40 MPa strength at 20 days of the curing. That means I can replace 100% of natural aggregates by the recycled aggregates if I use this technology. Okay, but remember, concrete payments are designed based upon flexible strength, not the compressive strength. But because of the paucity of the time, I may not be, uh, you know, covering all those aspects. But yeah, at 100%, we got the flexible strength also. Right. Now, what is there in India? <clears throat> How much of the material is required in India? Per year, we need 751 million tons of sand in India. And how much we are having? 
No, it is mostly banned by the high courts or the Supreme Court. What about the aggregates? We, per annum, we need 1.6 billion tons of aggregate. How much we are having? Yeah, I'm happy. 126 billion. Oh, I'll go and then, you know, uh, demolish the uh, uh, mountains and I, I can get it. For how long? Only 30 to 40 years. After 30 to 40 years, we'll not be having. And moreover, most of the, these, you know, resources are in reserved areas where there are the plants, there are rich forests, you cannot take it. So that means we have to look for waste materials. We have to use look for alternative materials that we can use it. Okay, so let's take a hypothetical condition. I am a transportation guy. I work on the cement concrete pavements. Let's say I have to convert all the roads into concrete roads. Okay, so what should be the you know uh, good option? Because you know we have GSB, we have WBM, we have surface layers, we have uh, you binder course, right? So if I get this project of converting all the roads of India into the concrete roads. Which layer I should prefer? Definitely, I should prefer GSB and WBM because here we are using the aggregates. We are not using cement. Remember this thing. So if I remove it, I'll get a aggregate, fresh aggregate that I can use it. So we did some study and we took some conditions. Okay, that in India, if in the worst to worst scenario also, if you are taking the aggregates out of the flexible payment, only GSB and WBM aggregates you'll be getting 28 billion tons of coarse aggregate and 9 billion tons of fine aggregate, which will be enough to convert all the payments into concrete payments because concrete payment requires lesser aggregates as compared to flexible payments. But what about these aggregates? Can I use this aggregate? Okay, can I use these aggregates are known as wrap aggregates. So this is a photo that I took from Rudki. Okay, it's in Uttarakhand. So what happened after constructing the payment, they realize that they have to construct the median also. And after that, they remove the payment. So when a flexible payment is to be demolished because of any reason, which is mostly happening after monsoon season, the material that we are getting, we are naming this material as reclaimed asphalt payment material. Now you'll be thinking, uh, you know, some of you are the from the field. When your aggregate is having a dust coating also, simple dust, then also you cannot use for the payment application. Why? Because it will be absorbed in the water. You have to clean the aggregate. Now you'll be thinking this mad person is saying that you can use a aggregate having a thick bitumen coating, 2 to 10 micrometer. Okay, and that's also for like concrete payment. You will be laughing on me. Okay, but what to do? We don't have the aggregates. We have to see because every year we are resurfacing, we are resurfacing, we are resurfacing with this material and the total thickness of the payment will be going more and more. Right. Can't I recycle that material? Definitely you can recycle for flexible payment. What about concrete payment? Because our emphasis is on the concrete payment. After some time, we'll be seeing all the national highways will be concrete payment. From where we'll be getting the aggregates? So we did one study. Okay. First, we fundamentally characterize the wrap material. What we found that wrap material will be having two main culprits, two main contaminants. One is agglomerated particles. Means it's 10 mm aggregates. This is also 10 mm aggregates. When you see, they will be sticking with each other because bitumen is a glue. You can remove it by your hand also. But the quantity is so significant, you can do it, you cannot do it. Right? The second culprit, which is the major culprit, is the bitumen flame. So let's say if you are using wrap aggregate in concrete, we need the interaction, the bonding between the cement paste and the aggregate. But now what is happening? It is covered by the bitumen. So obviously, the, the strength that you will be getting, the bonding between the bitumen and cement paste will be very, very poor because bitumen is an organic material, right? And similarly, the bonding between the agglomerated particles is weak. So obviously, your strength of the concrete will be lesser. If I talk about the fine aggregates, fine aggregates because the fine aggregates you can see here are already sticking on the coarse aggregate. So the fine aggregates will be gap graded in nature. Okay, so these are the challenges. So before using any material, you should know what could be the challenges. Then only we can bridge those gaps. So we thought, okay, why don't we use our procedure that we discussed for the cell concrete aggregate? We bought the material into the lab and we characterize the material. Characterization can be involving many, many properties. Okay, important properties 
specific gravity. So let's say the specific gravity of the natural aggregate was 2.65. For wrap, it is 2.39. Why it is? Because the specific gravity of bitumen is 1. Aggregate is 2.65. When you are coating it, the combined specific gravity will be reducing it. You need water absorption how much? Less than 2%, right? And wrap material, the water absorption was less than 2%. I was happy. Inside, the other properties also were better than the natural aggregates. Then why it is happening? Because you must be knowing in the laboratory, we let's say impact test, you have 13.5 kg of hammer, it will be impacting. Okay, then you have to see it and see how much of the aggregate has been broken. But in case of the wrap, the bitumen will be surrounding the aggregates under the impact of the loading. And then you cannot see it. That's why you are getting the good properties. So what does you can interfere from here? That the aggregates are good? No, because the methods prescribed by IS 2386, that is the specification for characterization of aggregates, are not valid for wrap aggregate until and unless there is between or until and unless you are able to remove these agglomerated particles. Then also we thought, okay, now right now we don't have any characterization thing. Okay, so what to do? Can't I use for the base course? Okay, can't I use for the base course? So in concrete payments, we have the wearing course, we have the base course similar to flexible payment. But the base course is dry lean concrete. As the name suggests, it dry means if you are keeping the concrete, it will be like that only. Okay, so zero slum mixture. Lean means the strength is very, very less, 7 MPA or 10 MPA. Okay, so it's, it's not a load bearing layer. Can't I use it? Because entire stresses will be taken by the bearing slab. It's only for providing, you know, uh, during construction, it should provide you a support for construction activities. Why can't I use it for there? So what I did, I replaced natural aggregates in different proportions, 25%, 50%, 75%, 100%, that what we are doing. Okay. And then I looked at the properties. So the properties, compressive strength. Dry lean concrete is designed for the compressive strength. Okay. Earlier, Three years back, the strength requirement was 7 MPA. Now it has been changed to 10 MPA. Okay, you can see here, in fact, 20 days also, they are not achieving 7 MPA strength. For the fine aggregates, it could not achieve. Right, that shows that wrap aggregates cannot be used. Okay, because it will be having agglomerated particles, it will be having asphalt clean, that will be reducing your properties. Now what to do? For recycled concrete aggregate, we could remove the motor, right, by heating it. So can't I remove this motor? Can't I remove this bitumen film? I don't have to completely remove the bitumen film. If I can puncture the bitumen film at few locations from where cement can go, interact with the aggregate surface, it will be very, very good. Okay. Now think. Can't I remove the bitumen? Yes, you can remove the bitumen. You can mix kerosene. You can mix petrol. You can mix benzene. And then, because bitumen is a hydrocarbon, it will be completely soluble and then you can remove the bitumen. Can I do it? Can it will be a sustainable approach? No. Will it be a cheaper method? No. You know, okay, how much quantity of petrol will be requiring? Right. So what to do? So we, we, we studied this bitumen and we found that bitumen is a hydrocarbon, right? And by somehow, if I make the bitumen brittle, Okay, so if something is brittle and if you create the mechanical stresses, what will happen? It can be removed. Now the next question, how to make this thing brittle? Okay, so we know bitumen is a hydrocarbon. Oxidation will happen. Okay, oxidation can make bitumen film brittle, not harder, brittle. So, so what we did, we removed the payment, we process at the site and we kept the aggregates in the open farm for around six to eight months because when you're keeping in the loose condition there will be accelerated oxidation which can make the bitumen film very brittle in the nature you can see here the color is brown earlier the color was black why because it was stockpiled into the open environment open farm and then we brought the aggregates into the laboratory we studied the aggregates we came up with a new technique we named as a abrasion and attrition technique okay what you have to do you have to place the aggregate around 25 kg of aggregate into the mixture put some steel balls like in the miller machine right we did for recycled concrete aggregate allow it to rotate for 15 to 20 minutes okay remember we did thousands of thousands of the trials and after that we came out with this uh, quantity okay you can also optimize your 
equipment based upon your equipment you can optimize it for my the mixture was around 130 165 kg capacity so i put 25 to 30 kg of aggregate and put 15 number of bowls uh, no 10 to 12 number of bowls and allow it to rotate for around 20 to 25 minute you can see here there is a color difference earlier the aggregates were completely coated with bitumen now it is the surface is visible now i am planning to use for the concrete pavements now there will be question uh, some of you are application oriented right you will be saying this can i use this technique for the pavement can i use this technique you can do whatever you want to do in the laboratory can you do for the field application there will be millions of tons of aggregates we have to use it can i do it that means we have to optimize it right we have to make it uh, industry oriented okay that is the other part of the presentation but to convince the persons that yes we can use the rap aggregates what i did i uh, i decided that i'll not be using the rap aggregates after treating i'll be using in the as received form okay so we went to a site there was a flexible payment we removed the flexible payment and we processed at the site okay breaking it right to to simulate a worst scenario worst scenario means everything was done by the manpower only and then we constructed two payments one payment we used natural aggregates we named as a control slab and one payment we used wrap aggregates that is this flexible payment based aggregate okay we used in different proportions okay we we did laboratory characterization we did many properties and then we came out that we'll be using 100% aggregates remember we used 100% aggregate for the base course and 65% of the wrap aggregates for the surface course okay and we did the construction okay so you can see this was the construction thing. we did absolutely the same method that we have used for natural aggregate we use the same because it should be labor oriented right so we did everything and then you can see here that this is the my payment this is my natural payment this is the payment with wrap aggregate look wise both were same okay and strength wise 7 days strength 10 mp is required and we got 10 mp strength for base course that means 100% of the aggregate can be used but we have increased the cement content by around 25 to 30% for this surface course you can see the strength was 5.88 okay flex strength is 5.88 for wrap slab which was having 65% of the wrap aggregate it was 5.34 which was higher than the recommendation limit that is 4.5 which shows that yes wrap aggregates can be used in a proportions of around 65% for the top layer okay it will be giving you good properties it is not only reducing the cost of the construction but it will improve other properties one of the other properties that we are considering is the stresses because of temperature remember if somebody ask you what is the difference between building concrete and the pavement concrete we are designing based upon the flex strength also we are considering the stresses because of the temperature okay so if your pavement is there in the day time there will be sun right and then the temperature at the surface will be higher than the temperature at the bottom so your pavement will be curling like that and when your pavement is curling want to curl but can my pavement can curl no why concrete pavement is very very strong right then the stresses will be coming okay so stresses is not because of the loading because of the temperature also so we map the temperature for all the seasons see in north india we will be having summers in june will be having monsoon in august okay and we'll be having winters in december okay so we covered everything and we see that how the stresses are behaving when uh, we are including wrap aggregates in the pavement and we found that when you use the wrap aggregates the temperature differential will be lesser by around 2 degrees celsius and you know the model the total stresses on the pavement is a combination of stresses because of loading and stresses because of temperature okay so